Today I'd like to visit with you a little bit about uh, manure application on frozen and snow-covered land. And <clears throat> we all know that, that uh, where we put the manure and, and if the manure actually ends up uh, in, in, in stream uh, makes, makes a big difference in, in our public image. Uh, the way that the, the, the community and the public at large uh, uh, scrutinizes us. Uh, we've, got, we've got livestock. Uh, very often we need to find a, a way to spread winter manure. And yet uh, in Wisconsin, in, the, in the, uh, the, the winter of 2005, we ended up with, with fish kills and well contaminations and runoff events sort of scattered throughout the state. And it ended up being a sort of a perfect storm of, of the way that the winter existed for the first couple of months, uh, and then the way that the, that the temperatures rose and, and winter transitioned to spring. Uh, guys didn't get enough uh, liquid manure out uh, in the fall of the year. Uh, there was a chance to get some out uh, in, in, in February and, and early March, and then, uh, Spring came, uh, we had a lot of runoff, and, and we, we ended up uh, really ended up with a, with a black eye. And it, it sort of became a, a new, a new um, uh, spot in, in Wisconsin's uh, winter manure application uh, question, uh, where a lot more of the public and a lot more of the, of the regulating agencies uh, started to, to talk a lot more about really uh, prohibiting winter manure application. And so what I'd like to visit with you about today is research that we've been doing uh, through the University of Wisconsin uh, in our Discovery Farms program where we are, are doing on-farm research, uh, surface water quality monitoring on private farms. We're, we're out on, on a number of farms uh, throughout the state using um, uh, the sort of a, the, the, the next step uh, from uh, university research farms uh, where, where just the small plot research is happening. Uh, then we've, we've actually got uh, at least two uh, farms where, where there's, there's some, some farming that's happening and, and it's sort of a systems um, uh, university farm. Uh, but, but we're taking all of this out to, out to um, um, private farms, and all of the, the um, um, data and the, 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 the lab analysis and, and the number crunching and, and, and everything that's involved with, with reporting our, our numbers uh, is completely uh, uh, monitored by the USGS, United States Geological Survey. And they are uh, complete and total experts uh, when it comes to uh, monitoring water and, and setting up equipment and, and just doing, doing this kind of, of research. And so we've partnered with them uh, to, to do what we're going to talk about. Every one of the sites that, that, we, that we've got uh, surface water monitoring on is, is set up with its own uh, weather, weather station and, and telecommunication uh, uh, possibilities where, where folks who are, who are 100 miles or more away can actually reprogram uh, the way that the, the sampling starts to happen uh, on, on farms. <clears throat> what we do is we set up um, uh, in, in notches in the landscape, uh, grass waterway areas that, that, that have egg, egg uh, land, egg, egg fields uh, on either side of it. Uh, in the grass waterway area, we set up these flumes uh, and, and pretty much uh, partition off uh, the, the waterway so that any surface water runoff that's coming through has to come through this flume. And, and once the, the, the surface water that's coming off of the landscape reaches a critical uh, elevation in, in this flume, uh, it, it kicks into gear uh, an automatic sampling process. Automatic sampling where, where water uh, comes gets deposited into uh, refrigerated plastic bottles. Uh, it's computerized. It's got its own power source. And so in, in general, this is, this is the way that, that uh, uh, this information is, is coming to us. 
When we take a look at a storm, a, a, a rainfall event where enough rain came onto the landscape, uh, came down into the, into the grass waterway, uh, through our flume, and, and reached that critical spot where a bunch of samples started to, to get drawn, uh, what we end up with um, is the, the, the capacity of the refrigerator is 24 bottles. And, and sort of through, through the whole storm, uh, from the beginning to, to when it's really intense to when it tapers off and, and ends, we, we try to grab a sample uh, from, from the, whole, the whole storm event. And we end up uh, having, having 24 bottles that, that get mixed together then into uh, uh, what, what that storm uh, uh, portrays. And then a bunch of, a bunch of, of lab analysis uh, occurs, the, the, the different nitrogen scenarios, phosphorus scenarios, as well as suspended sediment and, and total dissolved solids. So it, it gets run through uh, a rigorous uh, lab analysis. We've got, uh, and so to continue on here, uh, when, we're, when we're getting ready to show you what, what we have uh, learned about winter manure spreading on frozen and snow-covered land, it's all based on, on uh, 23 different spots uh, all around the state that are range anywhere from six to, to, to 600 acres worth of some, some type of a watershed where the water is getting collected out of it. And, and uh, every one of those uh, places have, have their own meteorological station. 